tabloids, political talking heads, and just about everyone is talking about the shocking performance by Sam Smith and his hellkeeper, Kim Petras, at this year's Grammy Awards show. The performance has been called a satanic display by many who watched, and in a now-deleted reply on Twitter to Sam Smith's pictures previewing the performance, the official CBS Twitter page said, we are ready to worship. So just what were they worshiping? Well, the seductive display of half-naked worshipers bowed down to Smith while he displayed himself in a top hat with devil horns, as flames marked much of the performance as his co-star was kept in a cage as his hellkeeper. The host of the Grammys, comedian Trevor Noah, joked about the performance as he imitated a phone call with his mom, calling him and reminding him that she warned him of the dangers of Hollywood. Yeah, you did warn me about Hollywood. Yes, yes you did, mom. Yeah, you did. I, yeah, I will, I will. Thank you, thank you. She said she'll be praying for all of us. Thank you, all right. The performance was then followed up by an advertisement by none other than Pfizer, who has also drawn the ire of millions of Americans who believe that this isn't the first time they have helped to thrust something upon the public without any discretion. In an interview, Petras was asked what exactly inspired the hell-bent performance. Well, um, I, th I think a lot of um, people honestly have kind of uh, labeled what I, what I stand for and what Sam stands for as uh, religiously uh, not cool. And uh, I personally grew up wondering about religion and wanting to be a part of it, but then slowly realizing it doesn't want me to be a part of it. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's a take on uh, not being able to choose religion and not being able to, you know, live the way that people might want you to live. Um, because, uh, you know, as a trans person, I'm kind of already not a want it in, uh, in religion. So we were doing a take on that and it was kind of hellkeeper Kim. Petras was subject to mass media coverage in Germany from a young age as he underwent gender transition surgery so early in his life that he was declared the youngest transgender person in the world. When Petras was just 13 years old, he appeared on a German news show where he spoke of his medical gender transformation. His goal was to receive sex reassignment surgery at age 16 before the current legal requirement of 18 years of age in Germany. He is now making headlines again for being the first transgender artist to win a Grammy for the best pop duo group performance. And while pushing transgenderism and homosexuality in the mainstream is a clear objective in these demonic demonstrations, another goal that many of the artists, songwriters, and performers have continued to push forth is the normalization of God-hating in the form of modern-day Satanism. In fact, a recent study in the UK showed that Satanism is the new trendy religion and that many of the young people are turning away from what they believe is old, rigid religion into a new wave of do what thou wilt in theory and practice. Over in the United States, it isn't looking any better. In speaking of a Salon article praising Satanism, one writer attempted to show how Satanism is indeed everywhere in our culture and how we got to a place where worshiping Satan is now normative in the U.S. Quote, but how did we get to a point where an online magazine with 10 million monthly readers is hailing Satanists as last-ditch heroes? The truth is that our modern sympathy for the devil has deep roots, and Americans in particular are highly susceptible. In the article, it documents how fictional books such as Milton's Paradise Lost fomented some of the hearts of the antinomian dissenters who pushed against religiosity and pendulum swung from Catholic dogma into the waiting arms of lawlessness, and even pushed against the law of Christ as a moral ethic for governing the true body of Christ. Lawrence Clarkson, an antinomian contemporary of Milton, even wrote in one 1640 pamphlet that sin is fake news. Quote, Sin hath its conception only in the imagination. Therefore, 
So long as the act was in God, or nakedly produced by God, it was as holy as God. As they say today, believe in yourself and you can do anything. A century after Milton, the antinomian celebration of self-expression accelerated in the Romantic era. The engraver and poet William Blake declared in his 1790, The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, that, quote, no virtue can exist without breaking these Ten Commandments. Jesus was all virtue and acted from impulse, not from rules. While the article attempts to show a connection between the Revolutionary War and the Rebellion of Satan, that is a bit too far-reaching to be accurate. It does give a good understanding of some of the acceptance of rebellion in the culture from the likes of Crowley, Nietzsche, and the Church of Satan founder, Anton Xander LaVey. As it is stated in the article, quote, and tracing the history of that rebellion brings us today to the startling conclusion that post-Christian America is an increasingly Satanist regime. But is this rebellion simply a heart for lawlessness? Are those who are captivated by the idea of living without the limitations of a moral law simply worshiping self? Or is there something more sinister going on that they are not even privy to? While many think that following Satanism is actually this very form of rebellion and not the literal demonic worship that it is, many do not realize that the very founders of the religion, both Aleister Crowley and Anton Xander LaVey, believed in a literal Satan. Crowley, explaining in his autobiography, The Confessions of Aleister Crowley, quote, I simply went over to Satan's side, and to this hour, I cannot tell why. And also wrote that he, quote, was not content to just believe in Satan. I wanted to be his chief of staff. Anton LaVey, being more diplomatic and sneaky with his betrayal, was exposed for the deistic Satan worshiper that he truly was. We detailed this account in our video, True Hollywood Hauntings. LaVey convinced many that joining the Church of Satan was merely a symbol of rebellion and not an actual religion that believed in a literal Satan. The only problem with that is that they've been lied to. What they simply see as rebellion or the advancement of their will and the acceptance of self was really a delusion painted by not only Satan, but even LaVey himself. In an article by Joe Schimmel titled, The Truth About Satanic Cults, he details his experience with one of the Manson murderers, Susan Atkins, and her knowledge of what Anton truly believed. One of the delusions that we will clear up at the outset of this article is the lie that leading satanic cults do not believe in or truly worship the devil. First of all, it should be understood that Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, viewed Satan as a true entity that he actually worshiped before his death. Anton LaVey deceived a lot of people who joined the Church of Satan by claiming that Satan only represented the repressed forces of nature, but was not a real entity. In my interviews with former Charles Manson family member, Susan Atkins, who was still in prison at the time after being convicted of eight murders, she blew the lid off of Anton's lie. As a former associate of Anton LaVey's, who danced for him and spent personal time with him before joining the Manson family, Atkins was privy to conversations with LaVey before he became popular. Atkins told me repeatedly that while LaVey promotes a watered-down, palatable form of Satanism to the ignorant masses which he is deceiving, he acknowledged the exact opposite to her and to his inner core of Satanists in the Church of Satan. Susan Atkins shared with me that LaVey had told her emphatically while she was in his home that they truly worshiped Satan as a real entity and as the one who began the initial rebellion against God. Atkins also stated, quote, Anton told me that as a Satanist, he does believe in the God of the Bible, but he refused to worship him and made a conscious decision to worship Satan instead. And Anton himself let his hair down regarding his true beliefs as well. LaVey let his guard down when responding to other Satanists that considered him not extreme enough. LaVey, while in a defensive mode, admitted that the image that he presented publicly was deceptive, declaring, quote, if they're at all intelligent, other true Satanists, they'll realize 
that there's only so much I can say publicly. I will not advance things in print which make my position untenable. How long would the Church of Satan have lasted if I hadn't appeased an outrage in just the right combination? It required a certain amount of discretion and diplomacy to balance the outrage. While the downplay of Satan continues in our modern culture, the truth remains that he is a murderer from the beginning and he is the father of lies. Anyone who is following him, in jest or not, given over to his power, knowingly or not. While many people were aghast at the satanic ritual performance at the Grammys, the truth is that these satanic performances have permeated the Grammys for many years. At the 2012 Grammys, Nicki Minaj had a mock exorcism performed on her and later claimed that she did it to prove that the demon that possesses her, which she claims is sexually perverted and calls Roman, is too powerful to be cast out. At the 2014 Grammys, Katy Perry performed Dark Horse with a performance of what appeared to be a witch's Sabbath with Satan and demons glorifying her. At the 2015 Grammys, the music industry went beyond the 666 stage set, Katy Perry's witch's Sabbath and showing Satan's power through impotent exorcisms to even more straight up in your face devil worship. Incredibly, Madonna came out with all kinds of devil horned demons appearing to worship her as she sang her song Living for Love. She went so far as to use mock Christian imagery with a choir singing in the background while she sang about being born again and on my knees in the dark and then like Satan himself about falling from heaven as she's depicted as falling from heaven on the Grammy stage. She or the demon channeling her now appears to be living for the love it can get from its worshipful fans. Not to be outdone in devil worship, ACDC sang their ode to Satan, Highway to Hell. Before millions of people in what is supposed to be family entertainment, they sang I'm on a highway to hell and about selling their souls to Satan for fame and success when they sang Hey Satan paid my dues playing in a rockin' band. Of course the song goes on to state I'm going down, all the way down, I'm on a highway to hell. Katie, who dressed in white when she sang By the Grace of God, caused a bit of cognitive dissonance when she showed her true colors and joined in the devil worship. Perry, along with many others, sported her glow-in-the-dark devil horns and even made the devil horn symbol with both of her hands as she sang along with ACDC about how she too is on a highway to hell. Katy Perry even went so far as to falsely claim that God spoke to her before the Super Bowl and that he supposedly said to her, you got this and I got you. I was praying and I got a word from God and he says, um, you got this and I got you. But God would not contradict himself and encourage Katy Perry to sing about kissing a girl and lesbian experimentation, behavior that she gave mass promotion to at the Super Bowl, behavior that God lovingly warns against in the biblical book of Romans chapter 1. Katy Perry has already admitted that she is not following the biblical God of creation, and many of her songs and performances obviously glorify the God of this world, Satan. Madonna, who had already played her role of satanic worship puppet at the Grammys, actually led the introduction ceremony for this year's satanic display as she encouraged more and more people to continue in rebellion. I'm here to give thanks to all the rebels out there forging a new path and taking the heat for all of it. You guys need to know, all you troublemakers out there, you need to know that your fearlessness does not go unnoticed. You are seen, you are heard, and most of all, you are appreciated. The aging pop star had recently done a photo shoot in which she portrayed herself as Jesus in a display that mocked Jesus' Last Supper, where he instituted the communion service that millions upon millions of Christians have done for over 2,000 years to commemorate the death that he died to pay for the world's sins. But this is not remotely close to her first time mocking Jesus and using the outrage to further her career. And she even used such displays to normalize the very performances that have become commonplace at the Grammys. She also prophetically spoke of how she would use her homoerotic videos to normalize homosexual behavior to middle America, where it was not yet accepted. In an interview with the magazine The Advocate, she was asked about her large contingency of homosexual admirers and how she uses her reach 
for the aforementioned normalization. She was asked, quote, You have a huge gay following, as I'm sure you know. What do you think you say to gay people? What message do they get? I'm a high visibility person, and I know that they know I'm completely compassionate about their choice in life, their lifestyle, and I support it. To have a person like me saying that is helpful to them. They appreciate that. But maybe there are other things. You say tribal. Maybe I want to say primal. I don't really know. A lot of the issues I deal with are sexual, and I'm constantly trying to challenge the accepted ways of behaving sexually. Maybe they appreciate that. When asked, what do teenage kids from middle America think when they see men dancing together or wearing bullet bras? Are they digesting these sophisticated images? She replied, they digest it on a lot of different levels. Some people will see it and be disgusted by it, but maybe they'll be unconsciously aroused by it. Maybe they'll be unconsciously challenged by the idea of men in women's lingerie. Then there are people who see it and are amused by it, see the irony of it, see things that maybe frightened them before, and know that it's not something to be so frightened of. If people keep seeing it and seeing it and seeing it, eventually it's not going to be such a strange thing. This wide range acceptance of perversion has only contributed to the insatiable desire of turning shameful acts into normalized behavior. Sam graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first uh, transgender woman to win this award. <laughs> and, and I'm so... In the unholy song that was performed at the Grammys, it tells of a story of a husband and father stepping out of the bounds of the marriage covenant. Petras stated on a red carpet what the song was all about. Uh, Unholy is about um, a guy, a friend of Sam's, uh, who uh, cheats uh, on his wife and she doesn't know it and he thinks that's cool. <laughs> and Sam's kind of dragging him for it, which as, you know, Sounds pretty unholy As Sam said, yeah. <laughs> As you can hear in this clip of their song Unholy, they sing Sadly enough, millions upon millions have been singing and dancing to a song glorifying the act of adultery. Sam Smith even talked about his parents hearing the song and what they thought about it. Oh, on the mic, you're singing some pretty naughty lyrics. Mm. Right. Have you showed this song to your parents? You know, what do they say about these oh. lyrics? Oh, they love it. They're used to it. Oh, really? really? Yeah, my parents are used to my filth. And while many will point out the clearly wicked perversion of Smith, Madonna, and Petras, in their glorification of Satanism, transgenderism, and homosexuality, we must be reminded that adultery and fornication should also not be named among those who profess Christ. From both Petrus and Smith, we see the sad reality of what it looks like to have parents who are unwilling to guard a child's heart who is bent towards wickedness. Such acceptance is not a showcase of love, but an act of cowardice. The Bible warns that in the end times, people will be lawless. In fact, believers are warned to not let our hearts wax cold when we see lawlessness increasing. Instead of waxing cold, we should remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, who told us to endure through such times. The Apostle Paul, when writing to Timothy, predicted that it would look quite similar to these very displays that we see going on. Quote, For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. But in this very letter, which was a living eulogy, as Paul was about to be put to death and was writing his young discipler, he didn't tell him to freak out and lose hope. He reminded him of the truth of God's word and how it would be this very thing used against the forces of the evil one. 
Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work.